This video is of my IBM 5150. This is an original IBM PC. It's in pretty good shape. I've had this PC for quite a few years, obviously. There's a little bit of blemish up in here. Hasn't been turned on in quite a few years. What makes this PC unique is it's uh, all original and it's the first generation. I'll go ahead and take it apart here. Here's the PC with the cover removed. First thing you notice is the power supply on this unit is black. The original IBM PCs actually came with a black power supply. You see this unit has the coprocessor in it. it. has a CGA graphics board. I have the CGA monitor for this unit. We'll have to do some checkouts before we turn this thing on. A few unique things here. This card here is a memory card from IBM. Let's just go ahead and take this out of here. This is the original expansion memory card. See here the parts are actually made by IBM. Two hundred fifty six K memory, which for the time was quite a bit. This computer actually uses a Z80 processor. At the time these were created, most of the computers were using CPM. Some of the computers, like the Televideo, were being produced with the Zilog as well as the Intel parts. So, for the IBM, if you wanted to run CPM, uh, the way to do this is there was actually a card produced. That's this board here, and this has the Z80 processor on it. And you can boot this thing up and it'll actually run CPM. It's the manual for the board that's in here. I'll go ahead and take that card out. You can have a look at it. There's the processor. 8250 so back side there's nothing really unique in the rest of the computer standard floppy drive your standard I.O. board this is your printer port from IBM and then your CGA card and the old dip switches and to set the RAM some of us set these switches to put it to basically like no RAM that would bypass the memory test and then when we would uh, boot the thing it would actually come up fairly quick and you'd run a little program that you wrote that would change the settings in the RAM to tell the OS that it actually had more that it had more memory than what was available. Remember some of the old programs like WordStar you would uh, put 640k of memory in there and then WordStar would crash so you had to have your debugger out and modify some of these programs right from the factory to uh, uh, get them to run on more memory than what they were actually developed for. Just on the floppy drives how they've made up the jumpers here. swap cable yeah it's not done like this quite anymore next thing we need to do is clean out the heads and this PC hasn't been used in so long I'm just going to take a little bit of alcohol here I've gone ahead and cleaned up the floppy drive so the head should be at least clean now uh, it should be okay to boot power switch on this thing. Remember what was on here, how that came off. You see a little bit of probably a little bit of rust or something going on underneath the paint here. It's starting to bubble. 
It's actually held up pretty good over the years. So I've gone ahead and I've turned this thing on uh, with the power supply disconnected. Verified all the voltages, everything looked fine with the scope, no real excessive noise. Uh, kind of crazy for the age of this thing that the supply would be okay. Uh, but I think we're okay to go ahead and power this up, so I'm going to go get the monitor for it and we'll see if the monitor will turn on. I've also gone ahead and installed the uh, memory card here. I don't remember how much uh, DOS even required to boot on some of the later versions of DOS. I've looked through all my diskettes. I didn't find a copy of 1.0 DOS. Uh, this should be a copy of 2.1. This is the original 5153 CGA monitor. It's kind of interesting when you look at the back here. How this thing has been strain relieved. Your power cord actually plugs into the back of the PC. So the PC just has one power cord that goes to the unit. Lead serial number. We'll see if this thing even works. Looking at the monitor from the front. Not real pretty to look at. This one's got a lot of dirt on it. Not going to take the time to really clean it up here. You can see the dirt in the corners. Yeah. It's had a hard life. <laughs> We've got the monitor plugged in. So I was talking about so the monitor just plugs in the second adapter in the back of the unit. Now we start the hunt for a boot floppy. You think this is a lot of floppies. It's not. I got a box downstairs of these fives. I've looked through all my diskettes. I didn't find a copy of 1.0 DOS. Uh, this should be a copy of 2.1. It should be okay to run on this. We'll go ahead and give it a try here. It ends up booting, we'll see how many errors come up. Alright, 201. Is that going to be it? Hey, what do you know? Well, it looks like it boots anyway. Alright, 201. That's the next step. I have to check that out, see what's going on. It looks like 201 error code is just a memory fault. It's probably because I don't have the other card plugged in yet. Let's see if it'll go ahead and read the disk. Oop. Looks like some of the keys don't work. Yeah, we gotta degunk this keyboard. <laughs> so I'm afraid that's the next step. Just looking inside the keyboard here. We remember these things just being a nightmare. Seems like when you slid this apart, everything goes flying. You can see here the tabs. Well, the foam on this is actually in pretty good condition. I'm surprised this hasn't deteriorated more than what it has. Well, with it lifted out of here, I think we just pop the one screw. I think we'll just slide this thing right apart. And the keyboard turned out pretty nice. It's cleaner. That's for sure. One thing about taking these apart, yeah, don't. <laughs> we won't talk about it. So, now with the keyboard all working, let's 
go back to the CPM manual here. It's interesting uh, if you look through this. We're talking about uh, the reasons to run CPM, and they're talking about having true CPM installed on the PC. And this is the reason they want the Z80 on the PC platform. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time here, read through this manual, get reacquainted with the card, and then we'll see if we can uh, make it do something. Original microwave diskettes for the 8087. So I've gone ahead and cleaned the second floppy drive's heads in the Mac. I've also gone ahead and installed our Z80 CPU. I suspect the way this worked, uh, the way I remember this board working is you had to map this into some of the memory area of the PC. So the memory on this is actually shared between the PC and this card. So I suspect now uh, that's going to get rid of our memory error. And it should be okay to boot. And now we should be able to at least get the second floppy drive running. So I'll go ahead and flip her back on here. Try that out. Here's an original IBM floppy disk. Go ahead and try that on the second diskette drive now. Huh. What do you know? She reads. That gives us the two floppies. Let's try to boot up a CPM here. We'll see if that works now. Backup diskette. See if this is still good. There you go, CPM two point two. 1983. <laughs> of course, I have no idea how to run this anymore. It's been so many years. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to have to break out the uh, manual before I do much with this. It's been way too long. <laughs> but, it does seem to run. So that's good. Looks like the Z80 is okay. Microwave 8087 test. Let's see if that works here. This is microwave's performance index? Yep, it is. This is comparing against a original IBM PC, so I'd expect the indexes will all be at 1. What I remember.
<laughs> Looks like overall the PC's fine. Benchmarks is a 1.0, that's what we'd expect. <laughs> ah, 